Hi, I'm Monica and welcome to my reading vlog for Hellbent by the Bardugo. So I cannot wait to just get right into this book and I do have the Indigo exclusive edition which is like a red cover instead of the white one. And I don't know if every book has like these end pages but I have these pretty end pages. I think the only bonus thing in this book is that there are annotated scenes. There's like annotated scenes from uh, Lee Pardugo. But with all that being said, Hellbent is the sequel to Ninth House which is a dark academia adult fantasy book and with Ninth House I just recently did a reread of that and I did upload a reading vlog with spoilers if you are interested in that I will link it down below. I am very excited to get back into the world of Alex Stern and with Alex she has the ability to see ghosts. And with that, she is given a offer from Yale University to attend the university as well as oversee the rituals that are done by the eight secret societies in Yale. And she needs to make sure that the dark forces don't cause any disruptions to the rituals. And with that, we do have occult themes with mentions of like sacrifice, hell, demons, monsters. I am quite sure this one will be very, very intense. I'm just gonna say that there will be many spoilers ahead in this vlog and I'm just going to jump right into the vlog portion of this video. For my first check-in, I am already 15% of the way through. I am on chapter 9 and around page 80. And right off the bat for Hellbent, we are starting off right in the fall semester again during year two for Alex attending Yale University. And all that time from the end of book one, we figure out that Alex and Dawes has been trying to find a way to get a portal to hell or contact Darlington and rescue him from hell. Darlington in turn has been trying to contact Alex through the rituals in the secret societies. We also learn that over the summer, Alex's ex-boyfriend Lens, a drug dealer, sends for Alex to go back to LA to do some things for him. We don't really know what just yet but I'm predicting that it would have something to do with her powers or they suspect that Alex has some weird powers. <laughs> I just finished this chapter like chapter 8 and we do actually get an appearance of Darlington or maybe it is Darlington or not. I think it actually is him but he's now like part demon. And he's very creepy right now because he's just sitting in a golden circle of protection. He's not really talking and he actually has golden horns and golden tattoos on him. So it's a little bit strange. It also is a possibility that Darlington did get tortured in hell which is really sad for him. Um, we also find out that there are other murders that have been happening around Yale again and Alex is going to get roped in into that. So far, the setup of this book is very much better than Ninth House because we have everything established and we have our characters that we know already and I'm really excited to see where we go off from here. Halfway point of Hellbent and I am around 270 pages and I am on chapter 27. So, so far, a lot has happened since my last check-in. First, I did want to mention like the summer-related timeline and the events from Alex's summer and how that plays into the present day. So, she does have to do like tasks for the drug dealer Etienne, Aiton, I don't know how to say his name. She's a type of intimidator to get money that's owed to the drug dealer and Meanwhile, while Alex is doing that and running errands for him, she runs into a vampire and this vampire really kind of shocks me because I'm like, okay, we have vampires now in this world. And I do think that this guy will be a key player in like the later chapters of this book. Then going back to the October present day timeline, we have Darlington who is now back. Damon Darlington gave Alex a whole scavenger hunt to go on to try to find the portal of hell and like where that's located on the Yale campus. That entire conversation with him was very eerie and creepy to me. 
but I really like the hunt for the clues and tracking down where this portal to help was, especially with the need of having four murderers to perform the ritual to open the door. So we have Alex, Dawes, Turner, and Tripp was also roped into this, and I was pleasantly surprised by Tripp and his chill attitude. I think he adds a really nice funny side to this group. During this gauntlet, their ritual to open the portal to hell, they have to be essentially buried alive. That's what they describe it as. And we get to dive in deeper into like the side character stories. And we learn about how each person murdered another person. <laughs> I enjoyed learning about that even though that sounds a little bit weird. I just think it just gave more depth to the side characters as well. And it bonded all four of these characters together quite closely now. And we still have the ongoing murders happening around the campus. And I really think this descent into hell will help our characters figure out what's going on on that front. With Alex, she's more readily tempted to use her powers on a regular basis because she has ghosts entering her body for their strength and now she could also hear ghosts and see their memories so i really like that expansion on alex being more even more comfortable about her evolution of her powers and i think i'm gonna end this check-in here because alex and company are in hell and i need to find out what happens next so i'll see you in the next check-in okay so i just finished reading hellbent and a lot happened and I'm really happy about where this book ended. The first Descent into Hell was a success, but I have to say that the way Hell was being described, it sent chills down my spine when I read those parts. And I really like the use of the good magic to be used as a protection spell for our group because it also showed a really nice way that they're bonded together and strengthening their relationships with each other. That moment when Alex went back into hell alone to rescue Darlington again, um, I was shocked and I was just sitting there for a moment because with Darlington now back into the mortal realm. I was thinking after Darlington killed the demon or temporarily killed the demon that ate his soul, like who is Darlington now? Like what is he now? Like how is that going to work out for the future? Especially after being stuck in hell for a year after what he experienced down there and probably being tortured. Uh, the Darlington that we were introduced to in book one is definitely not the same. So that's going to be an interesting dynamic to their relationship. I also want to mention that Alex is quite clever because she tricks the demon to taking Etienne, the drug dealer, instead of any of the group while they're closing the portal to hell. It was really nice. It was like a nice trick back to the demons because the demons were playing games with all of them. And at the ending, like the last chapter, we find out that Trip is now a vampire and I love how he's so chill about it and that his soul is intact but he's now a vampire so <laughs> and at the end of this book we do have darlington being back as a half demon alex still being alex but she has a better understanding of her powers and her new fire ability also dawes develops more confidence and then turner still being the really reluctant detective helping out this group of teenagers or young adults i know i finished this book like two days after its release and all I have to say is like book three better be coming soon and onto my final thoughts. So with Hellbent, it's five stars for me. <laughs> it was so easy to get into this book and read it because the foundation of the world and the characters were already established from book one so it did make it an easier reading experience. I really did like how the plot ended up playing out from learning how to open up the portal to hell to Darlington being returned back to the mortal realm and how his year in hell and the consequences of that came about. There was also this feeling throughout the entire book of a group of people coming together to then hunt down monsters and demons and banish them from earth to be sent back to hell. It gave off the feeling of me seeing a formation or like a form of the TV show Supernatural coming to light. 
I think that's all I want in book three is just to see this group of characters go on adventures, hunt down demons and ghosts and other monsters to send them back to where they came from. I feel like that would be so fun to see, but we did get like a taste of that in this one. Speaking about our characters, we have Alex still taking the charge in this book and she very much was the leader in figuring out how to rescue Darlington. She really isn't afraid to approach complex situations, especially involving like magic, ghosts, and hell. And I especially loved her using her wits to keep herself and her friends safe from their enemies. With Dawes a scholar, um, she really did continue to grow on me throughout this book because she's like the mother protective hen of all of them, but she is obviously very knowledgeable and she knows what she's talking about whenever they're researching something. Then with Turner the detective, he also gets roped in into this mess of rescuing Darlington from hell again and I did find him to be like the moral type of person of the group. We also have Tripp being a unexpected but fun addition to the group. He's like the goofy one part of this weird mishmash of characters and we also have Mercy who is a human but doesn't really understand what she's getting into and she gets more than what she bargained for. Last but not least we have Darlington who believes as a child in so much of magic that he went on a relentless pursuit of finding magic or something extraordinary on earth but then he ends up being a demon in hell. I really did like the mention of Darlington being that type of person to believe in magic and as he was growing up he was always searching for something more within the ordinary and it reminds me of like the innocence of childhood and believing in magic but I think that's why I also love reading so much as like my escape. It's going to be really fun to see how Darlington balances out his human side and his demon temptations in the future book. The best thing about this book for me were like the twists and turns and I feel like all the little bits throughout the book from the beginning to the end, everything had a purpose and it didn't feel anything was left out although we do have some unresolved things but that will be seen too in the next one. The magic we see this time is still very complex and still very gross because there was a lot of bodily fluids and other things that yeah. Personally, I wouldn't mind having a never-ending series with this group of characters going around hunting demons, hunting monsters, and having adventures. I read this interview on Goodreads with Lee Bardugo and she's saying that this Alex Stern series will only be a trilogy so we're only going to be getting the last and final book which would be book three and I'm hoping it will release soon, maybe within a year. I can't wait another like how, how long has it been like three years since Ninth House came out. Overall Hellbent is a fantastic dark academia book that has a very strong protagonist who isn't afraid to face down ghosts and demons. Although Alex is unlikable to some people but she really does have redeeming qualities and she isn't completely selfish as she does want to protect her friends a lot. And we also have a group of unlikely characters that come together to save the gentleman of Lethe. Truly, I had no huge expectations going into this book. I just wanted to be entertained and I was. So I'm really happy with how Hellbent turned out. I'm very much excited to see what happens in book three. And I think that's everything I wanted to say about this one, book two, Hellbent. And I hope you enjoyed this vlog. I feel like I was all over the place in this vlog but I think I ended up putting all my thoughts together in this last portion of the video but I did want to say thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and comment down below what you thought about Hellbent and of course don't forget to give me a huge thumbs up, hit that subscribe button down below and ring the notification bell to not miss any future uploads and I'll see you all in my next video. Bye!